from Hollywood. Come on now. It's the Tom Likas Show. Man, what the conversation with Tom? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted villain. No, I am your host. Right at our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Friday. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Mariella on the Tom Likas Hello. Show. Hi. How you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, by the way, I love your show. Although sometimes I don't necessarily agree with you like 100%. But what the hell, we all have our opinions. Um, yes, we do. Ha- I have a comment and a question at the end. Um, about three days ago, this guy called talking about how he was only 21 and could not go to school and work at the same time. And you like give me, you, you know, you lecture him about how he was so lazy about it. I totally agree with you because he was freaking lazy. Yes. He needs to go to school right. and work. I mean, I myself graduated about seven years ago, and for my bad luck, I didn't go to school, like, right away. You know, I was like, oh, I'm making good money. Well, fair money. I was making about $60,000 a year or whatever, and, you know, and I was still doing good, but it's just, I just need a little bit more. You know, I wanted to have an education, so whatever. I went from, like, a $5,000 check a month from, like, 1200 because I'm right now doing a part-time job, so... It's hard, let me tell you, working and going to school and, you know, having a social life is just, I mean, but if you could do it if you put your mind to it. So he was a freaking like Seattle and it can be done and my mother doesn't support me, my father doesn't support me. You know, I work, shoot, and I go to school and I'm proud of it. Good you know? for you. And um, and at the end you advise them, you know, like you need to go to school and do like the business administration thing. Um, my question is, I'm actually going into business administration because that's the field that I was actually working in. But what would you think will be a good, um, you know, emphasis in business administration to go after? Um, I'm assuming I'm going to graduate within like four years or so. Uh, I don't know. What would you recommend me, Tom, to well, like look into? Well, I think the economy is going to be on the upswing within four years. I think we're going to be in a lot better position than we are today. And rather than firing, as companies are doing right now, I think companies are going to be hiring. And so uh, you should plan for good economic times, uh, better economic times at that time. And um, you should, uh, first of all, find where your passion is. I mean, uh, uh, what are you enthusiastic about? Well, I definitely love management because as it is, like, you know, I'm a manager. at the, I'm an insurance agent and an office manager and agent manager, whatever. So definitely management. I like to deal with people, you know. Not necessarily boss them around, but I, you know, I kind of have a way for people to actually work together. And, and it's, I guess it's just a call that just grew out of me. And management is definitely something. I just didn't know into what kind of management because there's like millions of like options to go to. And I just. Well, you have to look at that list and you have to see what, what, what lights your fire. What, what really gets you excited. Um, you, maybe you don't know yet. Maybe you need to do a little reading. Uh, maybe you need to read the business publications for a while and see what excites you. Do you read, uh, I'm not talking about complicated magazines. Do you read Business Week or the Wall Street Journal? I don't, but I guess I should start reading now. I think it's time to start. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really like your show, Tom, again, and I'm just hooked. Unfortunately, I only hear 30 minutes of your show because it's like from my school to work and, and not going at 3.30, but... I mean, I'll try to listen to it online, but it's really hard because of the customers. But I understand. I show. Well, Mariella, thank you very much for the call. And by the way, I hope the listeners listening to you used to go to school. You're a lazy ass. <laughs> 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 Bye, Tom. You have a nice day. You too. And here's Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Hello. good afternoon, Tom. Yes, sir. Hey, I had a quick question for you about the $700 million quote rescue plan. With the government trying to purchase the private mortgages, and now there's a bill being passed, if I'm not mistaken, that were to where 
the U.S. Treasury can now invest in public equities. Do you find that to be somewhat socialism or socialistic in a way? I do. And uh, by the way, it's not legislation. That that was part of the bailout package. That part of the seven hundred billion dollars can be used to buy shares in banks. Yeah, Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase. I think are the three targets. Right. And um, I, of course, it's socialism. There's no doubt that it's socialism. You know, the the the, the years of the Republicans talking about free mar- marketplace, free enterprise, blah blah blah, until the companies get in trouble, then suddenly they're in favor of socialism. Yeah, I it's, you're, I think you're exactly right. It's interesting to see that everyone's for capitalism, but I I mean I'm in the VC kind of business, so I kind of have a general understanding. Although I'm not an expert, so don't get me wrong. But the investors that I do talk to, they'd rather see, I mean, you have billions upon billions of dollars sitting on the sidelines that came from mutual funds and hedge funds, and the, the private sector is sitting with their bank account full of money, trying to find a place to, place to put it because they've pulled out of the marketplace. Wouldn't this be, as, as, as long as there's some sort of support in the real estate market, I would think that capitalism would come in and these investors would start purchasing these, these, this, this real estate at a discount. And, I mean, granted, when you have an... Uh, well, estate, I mean, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the Southern California real estate market, uh, but sales were up, I think, was it 60% over a year ago in Southern California last month? Yeah, I think it was uh, this month compared to last, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think it was one, year to year. It was a comparison of this month a year ago. And and huh. so it was like September of last year to September this year, uh, but the majority of the sales were foreclosed properties. Right, exactly. So the average price of a home, uh, the median price, has gone down dramatically. Now, what do you think is going to happen after this bailout plan? Let's say, okay, the government starts to control these uh, these banks. Do you think there's going to be any sort of hyperinflation, or uh, obviously, I think there's going to be some inflationary problems. Well, right now we're going the exact opposite direction. Uh, we are uh, we're, we're, we're going into a deflationary time. Uh, the price of gasoline is dropping dramatically. The price of commodities has dropped. Uh, we, you know, we had a big bubble in commodities that has burst and it's dropped in a big way. Uh, right now, inflation's not the concern. Ben Bernanke, the head of the Federal Reserve, said as much recently. You know, here is all this bad news. Wall Street is burning down. He said, "Well, I think we've got inflation in check." Well, that's, that's good news. That's positive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're not working, it doesn't make much difference. That's true. That's true. As far as uh, opportunities in the marketplace, don't you feel that this is a good buying opportunity for people to start? Maybe, maybe not at this eighty-five. I think we're at eighty-five or eighty-two hundred level in the Dow. But don't you think in the seven thousand range? I mean, I can't imagine it getting much lower. Here's what I think, Ryan: that you and most people don't have the expertise to know where the bottom is. And what, amen to that. And what that means is you you should always be in the stock market, even now. But what you need to do is to be on a program of dollar cost averaging, something I have talked about on this program many times. Very familiar with it. I, cost averaging saved my tail when Wachovia dropped down to ninety three cents from eight dollars overnight. Well, uh, that you need to be investing the same dollar amount every month in a particular stock or mutual fund, preferably a mutual fund. Uh, and uh, I would start with in small increments. I would not be putting large amounts of money into the market at any time. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Now, okay, now what do you think is going to happen with this election? Do you think Obama would be more, um, obviously he's going to be taxing capital gains, but there's this whole argument to where if he taxes capital gains, investors won't have as much confidence, but I don't think that's the case. I think that if people... Well, realize- we have low taxes on capital gains now. How much confidence do people have in the market? That's true. I don't think there's a connection. No, I, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, I guess my question would be this. If you have if you have uh, Obama in place, I think people should understand, or at least maybe, maybe I question this more of a statement. People should understand and recognize that to, in order to balance the budget, you have either income or you have expenses paid. And without income from tax dollars, uh, where, where do they expect the federal government to have these funds readily available for most of these uh, let's say social. Well, I mean, number one, on. we 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 have spent so much money on the war in Iraq, and it was never paid for. Needs to be paid for. Yeah. And right. uh, taxes have to be raised. There's no two ways about it. The government has to cut spending, and taxes have to be raised. Both. No, Bill Clinton. No, me... By the way, Bill Clinton did exactly that in the '90s, and the economy went through the roof for the last half of the '90s. Yeah, he did a phenomenal job. Let me ask you this for a political slogan. How do you feel about this? Liberate and leave. 
Get out of Iraq. You liberate the people, you leave. Let them take care of their business. Well, I don't know if we need a slogan, but getting out of Iraq is definitely what we need to be doing. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. I just wanted everybody listening right now to know that you are absolutely right in everything you say about how you shouldn't get a girlfriend, you shouldn't get married. Girls will just screw you over. I was engaged for four years. I found out two months before we were supposed to get married. We were supposed to get married in May. I found out that my buddy, who I'd known for six years, was like my brother. He, him and her were screwing around by my back for like the past two months. I was letting her drive my brand new truck. I had given him my old truck so that he could get a job. He'd just gotten out of prison, so he didn't have a job. So while I was at work, going to work 50-hour weeks, she was going over to his house, telling me she was running errands, doing this, that, and they were screwing around behind my back the whole time. So what do you think about that? I think you're absolutely right. And the whole time that you said it, I was like, no, you know, She's different. It's a different situation. You know, that none of that will happen. And yeah, it wouldn't happen to you. By the way, you were engaged for how long? Four years. Tell well, I was with her for four years, and we were engaged for a year. Tell everybody how old you are. Uh, you're going to hate me. I'm 21. 21. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, you're absolutely right. Everybody else was like, oh, yeah, it's the right thing to do. You guys are ready. And the whole time you were saying you're not ready. It's the wrong thing, the wrong life. It's going to ruin you. And it did. So um, now I moved on. I'm, I, man, I've had plenty of fun with plenty of women since then. How did she react when you? How did she react when you caught her? Um, it was it was a violent one. I was pretty angry, and so I just took off. And um, the guy can't even face me. I've seen him at a couple bars recently, and uh, I started walking towards him, and they jumped in the car and left. I mean, I'm not. I'm over the whole situation. I'm not going to do something stupid and go hit him because I mean that's childish, and and I have no deal with that, but. I just, I just think it's funny that he can't even face me as a man, knowing that you know the cowardice thing he did. But, but you are absolutely right, Tom. Besides, you, you know, uh, as a man, you know, you would take any opportunity you have. Oh yeah. He's not, to, he's not to blame. She is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right, and that's what I said from the beginning when the whole thing happened. But I still pissed him, you know, as a, as a friend. I mean, I consider him like a brother to me. But to do that. You know, I thought it was uh, different with him, but, yeah, you're right. A man's a man. Can you take me out uh, with a bomb rip and a bomb? I certainly can. <laughs> Jeff on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, huge fan of what you do. Cool. Hey, um... Basically, well, by the way, am I going to see you at the Playboy Mansion next Thursday for Blotto and the Grotto? No. No, no. That's, that's Adam Carolla's event. Uh, you'll see Adam. I, I met you there at the first one, but I was just uh, hoping hoping to see you there at the next one. But anyways, uh, the point I wanted to bring up was that McKean never had a shot in this election. And if, you, uh, if you're familiar, you're, which I know you are, with uh, Marshall McLuhan, you would know why. Um, from the first debate on, he was... Going over television, which is a very, very cool medium, according to Marshall McLuhan, and um, Obama's a cool candidate, and uh, McCain is hot, as McLuhan would phrase it. And because of that, it didn't matter what came out of his mouth; he was gonna, he was gonna look uh, uh, inferior to Obama, and and therefore had no shot from the beginning, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, and by the way, uh, that's uh, 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 one of the reasons I think that a lot of people fail. Uh, going on television because uh, if you are prone to uh, fits of rage, fits of anger, if you look like you're talking through clenched teeth, television picks that up. Oh, absolutely. And and McCain is one of these people who looks like he's about to go off at any time. Right, and I, you know, I actually think that the cool persona, uh, which is what. Um, allowed JFK to get elected over Nixon uh, back during that election will also help Obama with foreign policy. People, you know, you know, 
foreign countries will will notice that and, and will uh, appreciate his presidential behavior. And I think that, uh, you know, everybody thinks he's going to get tested. I think everybody's going to respect that demeanor and, um, and act accordingly. Well, I think you make a good point, Jeff. I thank you for that. Here's Robert in Portland, Oregon, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time caller. Cool. Ah, I just had a question. My brother, he's getting married in December, and I've been trying to talk to him about it. I don't think it's a good idea for him, but every time I try and bring it up, he just totally shuts me down. I was wondering if you had any advice. I don't think there's anything you can do about somebody who wants to drive into a brick wall. Well, I mean, he's in the military, he's all alone, he's my twin, and um, I think this is just basically an outcry for companionship. It's, every- it's like so many of the military guys, and we talk to them on the air all the time. Uh, they're, they're afraid that if they get deployed, they won't have anybody back home who loves them and will send them letters and send them stuff. But uh, the reality is that uh, a lot of those girls get very bored uh, sitting here for six months at a time waiting for their husbands to come home. A lot of them are uh, immature. Uh, I see you're 19, so your brother is 19. Uh, Who's he marrying? Somebody 18? Correct, yeah. Right. Uh, 18-year-old girls, uh, they don't just sit home and twiddle their thumbs. You know, in the world of MySpace and Facebook and text messaging, trust me when I tell you, they're out uh, finding things to do. No, I know, and that's what I'm worrying about. I just right. I can't approach him on it. He won't listen. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess he's going to have to get hurt. You you did what you could. You told him your feelings. I mean, what are you going to do? Put a gun to his head? There's nothing you can do. He, he He's going to go ahead and do it. Uh, right. you, you can tell him I said he's crazy, and this will be bad for him, and he will end up uh, heartbroken. Uh, and, uh, you know, later on, he'll be called, Tom, I know you said don't get married, but I didn't listen. He's going to be one of those, like uh, so many others who call it. All right, then. Well, I will definitely do that. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Well, speaking of the military, guys, I get out of the military here in about four day, or 45 days, and um, I was considering my reenlistment options. The Marine Corps is offering me about $86,000. Now, I haven't been too smart because I don't have too much saved up before I get out, but I'm trying to go to school to become an anesthesiologist. I was wondering to see if I can get your uh, thoughts of should I take the bonus up front and stay another four years in the Marine Corps or get out and pursue my goals of becoming an anesthesiologist. Have you been uh, deployed already? Yes. How was that? How was deployment? Yeah. Uh, It it was difficult, um, but, you know, it has its plus sides. Such as? Uh, so it's, uh, you know, coming home and seeing family again and knowing that you can make it and survive. Right. Uh, were uh, you unscathed? Uh, were you injured? Uh, what no, happened? I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Um, an- another thing I failed to mention with the reenlistment bonus is um, I requested to be non-deployable for this, you know, reenlistment. So I wouldn't be deploying during the next four, four years. Right. And so when you request that, you get it or you request it and maybe you get it? You get it. It's it's written into the contract. Really? Yes. All right. Well, uh, you know, right now the economy is lousy. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, if you think that's a good financial step for you, fantastic. How much money does an anesthesiologist make? Um, the minimum that I was looking at is $250,000 a year, but I know from going to school and, and, and reading all about the uh, career field, uh, it's at least 10 to 12 years within within the field. So so how much is it when you get out of school? When you get out of school and you're actually completed, it's around 250 is the national average. At that time, I thought it took 10 years. Yes. 10 years to get the degree? Yeah, well, you got your you got your undergraduate, then you got your med school, and then you got your internship and your three years of residency. Well, if you started now, you'd be 32 <laughs> when you're done. Uh, if you uh, spend another four years, that means 36 or 37. Do you really want to be starting up at that point? No, no, I don't. Well, that's an important thing to consider. So I, I, I guess my, my next question or my real dilemma here is, um, you know, after taxes, I would probably rake in about 61000 um from the bonus, and I obviously would be non-deployable, like I said. What if um, If you were in this step, would you go ahead and take your career path that you've been trying to achieve? for quite some time, or would you uh, go and take the safe route right now? Well, it would depend on what I thought my odds were of going to school, not going into too much debt, um, and, uh, you know, your age, I've taken that into account. Uh, 
you know, I, I do think that starting as an anesthesiologist at 36 is a little late. Okay, okay. But it all depends on how much you need the 61,000 cashola. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would just be... Because you're not getting it for free. You're putting in four years of hard labor at low pay. What, what's that you said? You're putting in four years of hard labor at no pay at low pay. Yeah. You know, yeah. you divide that $61,000 over four years, it's $15,000 a year. That's not a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but that, that's just the bonus. I mean... I understand you know, that, but I'm, I'm saying if the bonus appears to be a lot of money. But amortized over four years, it's not as much as it seems. Yeah, very true. Correct. Correct. Okay, Tom. Well, thank you very much. I'll go in. Can you take me out with a machine gun and a bomb? I certainly can. Thank you. Tom Likes. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I just want to say I, I vote absentee, so I, I voted today. And yes, I voted for Barack Obama. But more importantly, as an Angelino, I got my opportunity to vote against Mark Ridley Thomas for county supervisor. And that was very exciting. Uh, um, I would vote, uh, just like John McCain, I'd vote for anybody but Mark Ridley Thomas. First of all, I'll never vote for a man with a hyphenated last name. But more importantly, uh, anybody who's an NFL fan should know it's Mark Ridley Thomas who's the primary reason we don't have an NFL team in Los Angeles. So uh, when you step into the voting booth, if you're a football fan, <laughs> Bernard Parks, <laughs> and not Mark Ridley Thomas, just had to say it. Anytime I see a commercial where all the people who support the candidate, they're all like union workers who work for the county. <laughs> Nurses support Mark Ridley Thomas. Of course they do. I'm sure they do. Teachers, firemen support Mark Ridley Thomas. You bet they do. Of course they do. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here. It's wide open telephones here. Let's say hello to Mike on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Doing great. I just wanted to say uh, thanks because um, I've been listening to you for a while, and ever since you started getting into this Obama thing, you know, you really steered me the right way. Um, I wasn't really sure on uh, who to vote for and whatnot, but I want to make sure my vote counts. Yeah. And, um, and you know, you, you've really said a lot of points, and I, I've looked into a few of them, and, you know, I just want to say thank you very cool. much. So, um, and actually, I got another question. I'm with my yes. friends. I'm on my way to Vegas, and I was wondering, uh, you have any recommendations on maybe where to go or to do what? Uh, maybe go uh, clubbing any uh, casinos that you like, or well, I mean, look, if you're looking to meet chicks, uh, the bar at the Hard Rock is one of the best places you can go. Yeah, I've heard. That's, I mean, to me, that's the epicenter right there. Because you don't have to pay a cover charge. You don't have to walk around a dance floor. <laughs> you, you go to the bar, you start boozing, and there's chicks in there. Exactly. That's what I'm headed for. Highly recommended. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thanks for taking my call. Can you take me out Bill O'Reilly's so? Uh Well, yes. Yes, actually, I could. I can't Thank do you. it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! I always get a laugh every time I hear that. By the way, the Factor for Kids available at Amazon.com. Bill O'Reilly not only shows you how to comport himself, but he's ready to show your kids how to comport themselves. <laughs> uh, that's right, you get a copy of the Factor for Kids so your kids can learn to be like Bill O'Reilly. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yosuke on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you, Tom? Great. Good. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Long, long time, first time. Excellent. Okay. I have a question. Uh, uh, since the economy and especially the real estate market, it's the way it is right now. I uh, patiently saved up myself a 200 uh, G and... Uh, 
my question is if I should pull the trigger now or should I wait a little bit longer or what would you do? I say this is, uh, we are now in that window of opportunity uh, for fantastic, fantastic buys in real estate. And the, the, the thing is, you have to make sure that what you're buying is something you love and plan to live in for a minimum of five years or maybe even the rest of your life. Could you see yourself being there for a very long time? Uh, yes, I can. But uh, I'm looking for like two bedrooms, two baths. Right. And uh, if I, in the long, long, long future, um, if I want to get married, um, then I will need to look for a bigger house. Then the, hopefully the property value goes up by then. But well, I don't don't, here's the thing. Don't bank on the property value going up anytime soon. Right. If, if you think that that's going to be what you're doing, better to wait. I see. Uh, there, there's no those days of buying a starter house and then trading up. It's that's over. Mm -hmm. You buy a house when you have the house of your dreams, and I not see. a minute before right. the house. I, the house you'll be living in forever, or at least for at least five years. Right, and I'm even afraid to put the money that I saved up to put in the stock market um, right now. Um, well, have you paid? Have you paid? Have you paid off all your bills? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, th that's the first thing you need to be doing. <laughs> that is correct. That's true. Secondly, you need to have uh, 12 months of emergency income saved. Oof. What would you What would you live on if you lost your job? That is, uh, yes, I can't cry home to my parents either. I'm so old. everything after that is your down payment. That's true. Hmm. No debts. Okay, I just uh, need to uh, get a wisdom from you, Professor. Yosuke, trust me when I tell you this is the way to go. Okay, I definitely take up on your advice. Um, and uh, among the other advices that you talk about every day. Well, thank you so much for that. Thank you for the time, Tom. Can you take me out Colby style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Listen to this weird story. Here's a weird story. This just came in in the past hour or so. A 47-year-old man was taken from the suburban home of former New York Knicks coach and Detroit Pistons great Isaiah Thomas to the hospital and treated for an accidental overdose of sleeping pills early today, this according to police. It says here police would not identify the victim except to give his age. Thomas is 47. Well, okay, let's see. Who could it be? Thomas, according to a report of the New York Post, and we all know how accurate the New York Post is, denied he was the person taken to the hospital, saying it was his daughter. Is she 47? Was he knocking him up in, in the nursery? I, that's unbelievable. Uh, but, uh, said Thomas, it wasn't an overdose. He said, my daughter's very down right now. None of us are okay. Harrison, New York Police Chief David Hall said the case, which stemmed from a 911 call, was not a suicide attempt. Hall said, I cannot confirm or deny the identity of the person, but someone was to white, transferred to White Plains Hospital. I do not know what happened after that. According to the Post, Thomas referred to a Thursday incident at the Rye County Day High School where Lauren, his six-foot-tall daughter, is a senior and plays basketball. He declined to elaborate, the Post reported, and requested the newspaper contact the school for details. I can tell you that the prescription pills involved were Lunesta, Hall said. There were two other people in the house, one of whom had called 911. I don't know if it was a housekeeper or who it was, but it was not Isaiah Thomas's wife. When we got there, this person was unconscious but breathing. We administered oxygen, and then when the ambulance arrived, they transported the person to White Plains Hospital. Hall told the New York Daily News that the victim had taken ten pills. 
Isaiah Thomas spoke with members of the New York Knicks organization and is okay, the Knicks said in a statement. He is dealing with a family matter, and we will have no further comment. He has asked that we respect his privacy, and we will. I love when famous people ask to have their privacy respected. First, they do 8 million interviews to get you to buy whatever it is they're selling. And then when they get in trouble, they ask you to respect the privacy. Says here the Daily News in New York also reported Thomas's 20-year-old son, Joshua, said the issue uh, surrounded his sister, Lauren, who suffers from hypoglycemia and who was feeling, why would you take Lunesta if you had hypoglycemia? He's fine, Joshua Thomas said of his father, according to the Daily News. Reports of sleeping pills are false, Joshua added. He doesn't take sleeping pills. He doesn't really take anything that's not organic. Hmm. Joshua Thomas told the Daily News his father and sister were resting in a hospital. Joshua said he looked faint from stressing over her, according to the newspaper. They sat him down, let him drink some water. He's fine. Says here, Harris Emergency Medical Service declined to confirm what happened to the Associated Press, citing medical privacy laws. This <laughs> is just amazing. Uh, anyway, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Kate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I had a quick question. I turned on the radio a couple days ago, and I heard the very end of the, of a quick story you were talking about how John McCain was somehow trying to get you kicked off the radio yes I wanted to know if that was if that was true that, that is true that is 100 percent true how is he doing that well it happened when I was working at a radio station in Phoenix Arizona uh, 20 years ago before I came to Los Angeles and um, I had requested an interview with John McCain when he was running for the US Senate and um, I was told that uh, he doesn't do radio interviews. Oh. And the very next day, I heard him on a competing radio station. Kind of like uh, what he did to uh, David Letterman recently. Right. So I went on the air and called him on it. I went on the air and, and, and told that story that I just told to you. And uh, instead of uh, apologizing like he did with David Letterman or appearing contrite, he flew into a rage and he called the owner of the station I was working for and demanded that he fire me. Wow. And ever since then, I've been lying in the weeds waiting for an opportunity to, uh, to, to uh, pay John McCain back. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, I, I'm voting been... for Obama and I've told the whole world I'm voting for Obama. And I've told the whole world what I think of John McCain and Sarah Palin. Great. Yeah, he doesn't really handle his anger very well. He's shown that. Oh, yes. You you can tell he's like a ticking time bomb. Pretty much. Well, thank you, Tom. I just wanted to find out if that was true and, and when, when that happened or how. It is true, and it happened, I believe, in 1987. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tom. Kate, thank you. Appreciate the call. It's Charlie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I had a quick question. I am a college student, and um, I'm 23 years old. And I was wondering how you feel about uh, at some point in my life, far down the road, after I graduate college, get a job, and I feel like I'm successful enough, I would like to get married and for the main purpose, and have kids, for the main purpose of spreading on my family name. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, un unless your last name is uh, unique, which most aren't, well, I mean, I I come from a, a family I would like, you know, a family I like, so. But why is that important to you? It's important, you know, because my, my dad, you know, passed his name on to me, and my last name has been around, the, you know, for a long time. And yeah, like but is it, is it so unique? What is your last name? It's not unique at all. It's Martin. It's not unique. I'm not <laughs> Open the phone book, Charlie. Come on. There's, there's millions of you. Yeah, yeah, of course there are, but, I mean, I mean, solely for that purpose, I would like to, you know, have kids someday and spread my name on But again, your your name has been spread in your honor. It's been spread millions of times. But, well, there aren't other, um, I have no male cousins and I have no brothers. I have sisters. Oh, don't so. worry. As I said, open the phone book. There's plenty of Martins in there. It's not It's not necessarily my family, Martin. It's an other family. But, you, but, but the point is M-A-R-T-I-N, right? Yeah. And even I know how to spell it because there's so many representatives of your name out there. Yeah, well, I agree with you, absolutely. And I and I always agree with pretty much 
everything, 99% uh, Dean of Martin, Billy Martin, go over the list. There's, over the years, there's been many Martins out there. Uh, absolutely, but they're not necessarily from my family. Doesn't but, matter. You uh, said it's the name you're trying to preserve. No, it's... It's my. It's more than my name. It's my blood. You know, it's the bloodline. I want to. And pass and it. why is that so important? Because my, I owe it to my ancestors, my grandparents. My well, father, you really, husband. you really don't owe it to anybody to do that. Do I owe it to people to do that? Oh, I guess not. But if you felt like you should, if you well, did then you owe still it, don't. You know, but you don't owe it. I mean, you may choose to do it, but you don't owe it to anyone. Yeah. I, well, I guess I don't owe it to anyone, but I, as a choice, do you think it's a, a bad choice? To, to well, I mean, it's a personal choice if that's the choice you want to make. Just remember that it's like any other choice in life. It has costs attached to it, risks and costs. Well, absolutely, and that's why I'm saying I'm a, I'm a USC architecture student. I'm about to graduate. I plan on becoming, making money, a lot of money, becoming successful before any of this comes into play. I just think it's make sure you have life. make sure you have an architectural practice, and make sure you are incorporated before you ever have a child or get married to anyone. Absolutely. Because otherwise, if you get divorced, as one out of two people do, uh, you'll end up uh, having a partner forever, and your wife will own half your business. Well, not. I would never get married without a prenup. I learned that from you. Right. Well, I'd see you, that that is certainly a necessity, no doubt about that. Tom, 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 like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likes Show. I don't put telephones on this Friday at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Terry Lee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. It's an honor to talk to you. I know. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate the time. Bizarre question, and I know politically I'm the ignorant public, although I do do my homework every four years. Um, I had a man outside of Target, of all places, tell me when I was asking him as a Republican um, why the choice for Palin? Because I know that there's more qualified women if he just wanted the Hillary votes. And this man who supposedly had been working on campaigns since Nixon said that um, he was going to get rid of Palin according to her scandals and then get who he really wants later. And I've, I've looked up as much as I can. I have never seen a historical incident of this of a vice president changing after the fact no am i missing it no it hasn't well it, it happened once but not at the president's behest keep in mind that uh, back in 1973, Spiro Agnew resigned as vice president of the united states in the middle right. of his term uh because he was involved in a big scandal which oh, by the okay. way involved all the things that he did as governor of maryland before he was the vice president okay all right so you can quit but the president can't fire you. Hey. Yeah, I like, was looking at policy, and I couldn't figure out how this would even be possible. No, once said, you've been you sworn know, in, you've been elected, and that's it. The president can't then throw you out. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. But the guy said, you know, well, according to all of her scandals, which have been many, that's how he would do it. And so this would make sense if it would then be a forced or suggested resignation. Well, it's not going to happen anyway, because McCain's no. going to lose. Yes, he is. Thank God. <laughs> so, anyway, Tom, that was my quick question. I just couldn't find an adequate answer online, and so you're kind of my quick fix, so I appreciate it. Thank you, Terry Lee, for the call. Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay. I have a question about Prop 8. Uh, I'm listening to these ads for Yes on Prop 8, and they're saying that they're going to be teaching in schools and all that other mess. Um, but I will, but I well, just remember, uh, first of all, for people who don't live in California, here uh, we have Proposition 8. And uh, as you may or may not know, uh, gay marriage is now legal in California. And so a group of Mormons and others have taken out a big ad campaign to support this proposition that they've created called Proposition 8 that would once again take away the rights of gays and lesbians to get married. Okay, go ahead. So what is your question? But the question is, I'm prop no. I'm hearing that they're saying that it's not going to be taught in schools. I just want to know. Be, I don't. I first of all, first of all, marriage is not taught in schools. Nah. 
Yeah, that's what I'm kind of confused about. Well, it's not taught in school. Uh, they are referring to a court decision in Massachusetts, which has nothing to do with California. California does not teach about marriage in schools. Okay, so then... And it does, by the way, does it matter to you whether they are teaching that, that, that something that is legal is legal? Um, not really, but that's why I'm kind of confused. I'm not sure if I do want my children. I feel like they should have a choice to know, if, to know about uh, gay marriage or not. Well, well, first of all, they're not teaching about marriage now in schools. And secondly, all you have to do is walk down the street to know about gay marriage. <laughs> I got you. I mean, being in school is not going to make any difference. But but the bottom line here is that these are a bunch of Mormon fear mongers who are trying to get you uh, to take away the right of gays and lesbians to get married. Now, personally, I think they were crazy to want the right to get married. I, I, I'm hoping to have uh, Proposition 69 next year, and that will be uh, uh, a proposition taking away the rights of straight people to get married. <laughs> and that way, uh, when your girlfriend comes to you and says, we ain't even going to get married, when am I going to get three? You say, well, honey, I'd love to, but it's illegal. I mean, gay people have the perfect situation. Why F it up? Exactly, Tom. I'm going to thank you, Tom. By the way, by the way, just so you know, I'm voting against Proposition Eight, against it. So okay. if you are for, and of course, as usual, that's how they do these things. If you are for leaving things the way they are, you have to vote against Proposition Eight. Yes, sir. All right. Hello. Let gay people find out how how lousy it is to be married. Let them find out. <laughs> When gay people have to start paying alimony, uh, they'll be they'll be Proposition Eight A. <laughs> they'll be trying to pad it themselves. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. We do this every Friday, and we welcome your phone calls. We got plenty more coming up here. Uh, by the way, if you can't get through on the telephones. We do have uh, email, and we do read the email while you're out there uh, listening to the program. You can send in uh, any comments about the program to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.